Hello once again, and if you don't know already, I'm Scott Florence, and today I figured it was appropriate to talk about what the Higgs boson is. I really need to work out a way to shorten that intro, but until then I'm just going to be cutting it off. Now, basically what the Higgs boson is, is it's a particle that is responsible for giving everything mass. Now, before I go into more detail about what the Higgs boson is, I'm going to have to talk to you about the other types of fields. Now, we're already aware of many of the different types of fields. You've probably said the magnetic field many times in your life, or if you're a fan of string theory, the electromagnetic tensor, and there's the gravitational field, and there's all sorts of different types of fields. What is a field? What is the actual thing that you call a field? What causes a thing that we call a field to exist? Now, when we start asking those sorts of questions, we realise that this field isn't really just a sort of wishy-washy thing. What it is, is it's particles. More specifically, the field is quantized, basically meaning that it comes in packets of energy, which we call bosons. And there's different bosons for each of the different types of fields. For the weak force, there's the W and Z bosons. For the strong force, there's the gluons. For the electromagnetic field, there's the photons. And for gravity, there may be gravitons, but we don't know that for certain yet, because all of the previous ones, other than gravitons, have been discovered. Now, perhaps what you're currently thinking of as these bosons as little particles that are just floating around the place. And that's not entirely correct. They're actually virtual particles. And what I mean by that is they're constantly popping in and out of existence. And the greater density of these virtual particles that there are means the greater the force that is exerted on another object. Now, you may be wondering, why is this relevant? Now, this is relevant because the Higgs field was theorised by three different groups of people. Now, within these three groups of people, there was Peter Higgs, Francois Engler, Robert Brute, Gerald Guralnik, Carl Hagen, and Tom Kibble. And these three groups all independently theorised the Higgs field, and each of them released papers about it in that same year. And what they theorised is this field exists at the same density throughout the universe. And it's the field that gives everything mass. The Higgs boson is just a quantized part of the field. And when virtual particles are created, a particle and its antipart are created, and then they annihilate with one another. But the Higgs boson is its own antiparticle, so you don't need to worry about them having different properties from one another. Now, one easy analogy to think about this is imagine a skydiver jumping out of a plane, and as they are falling to the ground, they are experiencing friction from the air that is going past them. And the friction is the interaction of the person with the air. And just imagine that that's the same sort of way that the Higgs bosons are interacting with the matter in order to give them mass rather than cause them to have a frictional force. And different particles interact differently with the Higgs field. For example, electrons interact very weakly with the Higgs field, meaning that they don't have very much mass, whereas tau quarks are the massive quarks, and they interact very strongly with the Higgs field, meaning that they have lots of mass, especially compared to the electron. That's all for now, and thanks for watching. Remember to check on this channel on Wednesday because I should be releasing a video about what CERN have been saying about the Higgs boson on their live stream, where they should be saying whether it has or has not been discovered and why. So I will be giving an overview about that. If you're viewing this from after that day, click here to go to that video. And if you want to see my last video about the Higgs boson announcement to come and also some planets that should not exist, you can just click over there. Anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you on Wednesday.